In a previous lesson, we learned how to add and subtract fractions with common denominators, denominators that are the same. Well, what happens if we have fractions with different denominators? Does that mean we can't add or subtract them? The answer is no. In mathematics, we always have a solution. Well, when we have a fraction added to another fraction that have different denominators, or we have a fraction take away another fraction with different denominators, we have to make the denominators the same. So we have to follow a simple process. I'm going to show you after we go through the theory, I'll show you to you in practical, we'll do examples for addition and subtraction, and you'll notice it's not hard. I use this method all the time. It always works and it's pretty easy. Let's see how it's done. First, we need to understand that we have the numerator and we have the denominator. The numerator is the number on top of the fraction bar and the denominator is the number on the bottom of the fraction bar. When we have a fraction added to another fraction or a fraction take away another fraction and we notice that the denominators are different, we have to make them the same. How do we make them the same? First step is to multiply the denominators as you can see in the red arrows. So what we do, we multiply the denominators together. Then, second step is to multiply the first numerator with the other denominator, as you can see in the green arrow there. The numerator times the denominator. Then we multiply a third multiplication. The second numerator with the first denominator, as you can see with the purple arrow there. So first, we multiply the denominators together. Then we multiply the first numerator with the second denominator. And lastly, we multiply the second numerator with the, th with the first denominator. What are we trying to do? We are actually making the denominators the same. That's what this process does. Let's see it in action. Two fifths plus one quarter. Hang on, the denominators are different. We have to follow this process. Very easy. Well, let's start. The first step is to multiply the denominators together. 5 times 4 is 20. We have our plus. 5 times 4, 20. That is our common denominator. Then, in the green arrow, it tells us we have to multiply down 2 times 4, 8. We always start with this one here. 2 times 4 is 8. And then, next arrow, which is in purple, 1 times 5 is 5. Guess what? What can you notice? Common denominators. Now, we can simply add the fraction. 8 plus 5, 13 over 20 is our answer. We multiplied the denominators, then we multiplied the numerator with the second denominator, then we multiplied the second numerator with the first denominator. So we have these arrows. 20 is our common denominator. 4 times 2 is 8. 5 times 1 or 1 times 5 is 5. Common denominators, now we can add. 8 plus 5, 13 over 20. We always ask, can we simplify? Well, in this case, 13 over 20, that is our answer. We can't simplify any further. Subtraction, same concept. We can't take away unless we have common denominators. Here, they are different. Well, let's follow. First step, as marked in the red arrow, we multiply the denominators to get a common denominator. 3 times 7 is 21. That's done. Then the numerator times the second denominator. 5 times 3, 15. And lastly, 1 times 7 is 7. We put our arrow just to show our working out. 1 times 7 is 7. 15 take away 7. 21 here. Our answer is 8 over 21. Can we simplify? 
once again, there is no highest common factor. That's our final answer. It is as simple as that. I'm going to do two more examples. That way, you'll get even better at it. Okay, let's do it. We have two more examples. Let's see how we're going to do it using the same concept. We have a subtraction, three-fifths take away a half. Well, we can realize and we can recognize straight away the denominator is different. We have to follow our simple process. First step is to multiply the denominators. Five times two. Put our subtraction sign. Then second step, the first numerator with the second denominator. Three times two is six. And then we multiply the first denominator with the second numerator. Five times one is five. Do we have common denominators? Of course we do. Six take away five. One over ten is our final answer. It can't be simplified. This is how easy it is. I always tell students, always show the arrows that you're working out. So later on, when you come to check, how do I do it? You check the arrows and you can remember and straight away do it straight away without having any problems whatsoever. Here, 2 sevenths plus 1 half. Well, denominator is different. We have to follow the same process. We multiply the denominators first. 2 times 7, 14. Put our plus. Then, numerator times denominator. 2 times 2 is 4. And then, numerator and denominator once again. 1 times 7, 7 times 1 is 7. Well, 14 and 14 is our common denominator. 4 plus 7, 11 over 14. Can we simplify? No, we can't. It's as simple as that. Is it that easy? Yes, it's that easy. Always follow it. I'm going to show you how easy it is when we multiply and divide using the similar method with arrows. Remember that. It's going to be always important for you to know how to do it, especially when you're not using your calculator. You remember this process. You'll always get it right without any problems.